Welcome students, I'm Mamta. Today we are going to do schizophrenia as a major category of mental illness. This is one of the extreme variations of behavior, a very worse form of mental illness of one of the very severe mental disorders and this results in total disorientation of personality, total disintegration of personality. Now in fact this particular disorder has a split in the mind and it's known as psychotic disorder. Psychotic refers to a person who is not in touch with reality. So if somebody is asking you about your own self, you will not be able to answer because you are not in touch with your own self. You are living in a different world altogether. Now this disorder was earlier confused with ghosts and uh, a lot of other uh, paranormal activities. But it's actually a disorder where there's a total abnormality in terms of thoughts, emotions, communication, as well as motor problems also occur here. It's a, a complete kind of a disorientation which happens, which results in all areas or problematic areas. Now, first we have uh, three kinds of symptoms that we'll be covering under this. But just a word of caution again, do not try and relate all these symptoms to your own self because you're not really equipped to identify these uh, illnesses and so don't apply or don't relate to your own self. Okay, coming to the symptoms, we have three major categories of symptoms. First symptom is the positive symptom. This category is, uh, now you would actually be wondering why positive. There's nothing positive about it. Positive only because it's a, a kind of an addition to personality. Something that was not there earlier, it's an add-on. And obviously there's a chemical change in the brain and therefore it is handled by medication. So in positive symptoms, we have three major categories of symptoms under, sub, under the positive symptom, three major subcategories. First is known as delusion, uh, second is hallucination, and third is formal thought disorder. Now delusion is basically, uh, we say like this person is totally having a delusion. Delusion refers to a belief which is very, very strong, a very firm belief but there's no evidence to substantiate or prove it. So it is firmly held, a belief firmly held on inadequate ground. There's no evidence, no reality, but the person is strongly holding on to that belief as right. Now, uh, we have various categories of delusions also under it. First we have is persecution. Persecution refers to the fact that let's say somebody, uh, you know, very strongly feels that uh, there is an investigative agency that is after me. And or there's a spy that is after me and they want to kill me, they want to, uh, you know, hurt me and harm me. That is persecution. Now, there's no re reality to it. There's no actual uh, event happening about it. But the person is very strongly holding on to this belief system that somebody is after me. They are following me. They are spying on me. They are about to kill me and therefore I need protection. That's persecution. They are ready out to persecute me. Second is reference. Now, reference basically means that, uh, you know, here they attach a very personal meaning to anything which is irrelevant. Uh, something which is very neutral environmentally, they attach a very strong personal reference. For instance, uh, in event of a tsunami, let's say a person says that, you know, tsunami has come just so that it can harm or it can spoil my vacation. So that's a delusion of reference. There's a similar delusion, which is delusion of control. Control refers to the fact that, you know, there's a chip planted in my brain and somebody outside, some alien is controlling my brain. That is the delusion of control where the person feels that others are out there to get me and control me. They have, you know, put in something in my mind and they are broadcasting my thoughts. That is the delusion of control. So some outside forces are controlling my mind and reading it and everything. They are changing and modifying my thoughts. That is the delusion of control. Last we have is delusion of grandeur. Now, grandeur as a term says, it's like an elaborated sense of self, a very totally, uh, you know, a grandiose form of a self where the person feels I'm very empowered. So somebody comes and tells you that, you know, I'm God or I'm an incarnation of God. That's a delusion of grandeur. Uh, a person says that, you know, I've just come on earth for a special purpose or I'm Jesus Christ or uh, I'm going to be a president of a particular country. So that's a grandeur. Next, we have hallucinations as another category of positive symptom, the second category. Hallucination refers to the fact that, you know, there's a false perception. So in perception, there's a lot of disorientation happening. Now what's happening here is that, again, because of the chemical changes in the brain, the sensory apparatus is not functioning very well. So there is nothing outside, but I am visualizing something outside. So if I 
uh, visualize ghosts or if I visualize a black figure which nobody else can see or I visualize a person who actually doesn't exist in terms of reality or in terms of other people's perception then that is hallucination. Now it is also a different kind although but then auditory and visual have been the most researched and auditory occurs the most along with visual. Auditory here refers to something that people hear, something that is not really happening in reality. People hear two people talking and they are scared of you know where the voices are coming from. So there is a voice in the brain which is doing a running commentary over something and the person gets scared because nothing of that so there is no such person whom he can see. That is auditory. Here we have two kinds of auditory hallucination. One is the second order auditory and the th uh, second is a third order. Second order means two people are referring to me, somebody is talking to me. That is a second order. A third order would be two people are talking to each other about me. That is a third order. Next we have under hallucination is a tactile hallucination which refers to touch. So some, somebody is feeling burning and tingling sensation in the body which is not resulting because of any physical change or any sensory change. That is a tactile hallucination. Then somatic, uh, a person feels that you know snake is crawling in the stomach. That is a somatic dealing with the body. Then there is visual, people see colors and different kinds of images which actually don't uh, exist. Then gustatory refers to uh, the taste. So somebody is offered a cake and the person says that you know this cake has poison and you want to kill me and that's why you're giving me poison. And these people really don't take medication because they're very very suspicious that you know whatever they are eating through somebody else's hands is very very risky and the person is out to get them. Then olfactory is the last one. Olfactory refers to the smell. So uh, they smell some poison, they smell something which is not very healthy which nobody else is able to smell. That's the olfactory hallucination. The last category of positive symptom that we have is formal thought disorder. Uh, uh, because this particular disorder deals uh, with a major incoherence in thoughts. So let's say you're talking to a person who is having some symptoms of schizophrenia, particularly the thought problem. If let's say you address a particular question to the person and the person answers something else which is totally not related to the question being asked. So that is one major problem where two people are not able to communicate because the person having the symptoms, sudden change of thoughts, one after the other the thoughts are changing. So the words are also changing and there's no meaning that the person can give out. There's no meaningful conversation happening or there's no relevant answer being given. So the person jumps different topics but without giving any relevant answer to what is being asked. So suppose you ask this person how are you? The person says yeah today's weather is very good or you ask the person where are you right now? So the person says today is uh, I was born in 1974. So answers are not very relevant, not very meaningful. The reason is because there's a split between the thought and the emotion and the thought as such is not expressed very well because there is so much sensory information that the person is not able to process. The selective perception doesn't really happen. So the thought is affected. So there are lots of terms associated here. One is derailment. Derailment means uh, like you look at a train being derailed from the track. Like that the person has so many thoughts which are not really relevant so there is no meaningful sentence. One after the other the words are just flowing out. Neologism is the other word which says new words are coined out. Suppose nipomanic. Now that is no meaningful word but then this person believes it to be. Pro pro uh, they give out words which are very very unusual and very very bizarre. There is no meaning attached to it according to the common layman language. So the normal communication is really not possible. Then there is a word perseveration in the thought disorder. Perseveration means they would keep on repeating a same thing again and again even if you ask them something else. So that's again uh, the category where they are just uh, monotonously repeating a particular word without having a meaning or without having the context for it. Next category that we have is the negative symptoms. Negative because something has been taken off from personality. So there's a deficit in personality. Something that was there has been now missing. So here it is mostly related to emotions as well as social apparatus of the person. Emotions, either there's an extreme emotion, normally these people do not really show any kind of emotion or it's a very shallow emotion, very very limited emotion. So that we call as blunted affect where there is limited emotion happening, shallow emotion, not much of an appropriate uh, emotional response according to the situation. So somebody goes for a funeral and here the person is supposed to cry, here the person is supposed to be sad. But these people show very limited emotion. It's inappropriate to the situation. Somebody might just start laughing in a funeral. So it's inappropriate. What is expected in a particular situation is not happening. 
flat affect here refers to no emotion at all. Their face will not really have any expression. You cannot really read through what they are going through right now. This is affect, A double F E C T affect. Then we have is evolution. Now, evolution refers to goal seeking, a behavior which is purposeful. So, these people they do not really start off with a particular behavior and complete it. They either start it or leave it in the middle. They are not able to complete the work because they are not able to complete and concentrate on a particular goal or a target. They are not able to do complete any purpose that they are supposed to do. Then there is a word elogia. Elogia refers to again emotional receptiveness and emotional response, which we have covered in terms of blunted and flat affect. And uh, this is the emotional aspect along with which there is a major social withdrawal. Now these people, they are not really socially very responsive. They are living in their own world. They are in the world of uh, dreams and uh, you know daydreaming and fantasy. Something that they are in which is not accessible to the other person. So the other person is not able to get into their world and understand what they are going through or talk to them. Last category of symptom is the psychomotor symptoms. Psychomotor refers to motor abnormalities. So uh, here what happens is the person either is excessively quiet. So either the person is totally uh, non-responsive, it is called as mutism or the person is in excess activity. So pacing around, talking fast, which is uh, again not very meaningful and coherent. So talking fast, moving around and a lot of motor. Uh, suppose this person sits in a particular posture like this person is staring into space and sitting for a very long duration. It could be hours, it could be a matter of days together and they can have you know uh, their hands get affected, their hands start paining, the color changes but the reason that they give is there is a purpose. For instance, a person is sitting like this and is saying that if I remove my hand, uh, there is a war going on right now on the hand that I am supporting. If I tilt it, uh, the people are going to shift and die. So this kind of a uh, aspect of psychomotor abnormality where these people maintain a particular posture for a very long duration. We call it catatonia. This term is catatonia for the motor abnormality. Any kind of excess or totally absentism of a motor ability or a motor capacity or motor performance. Now this covers three uh, sub symptoms under the psychomotor. First we have is catatonic stupor. Now stupor as the term suggests is totally motionless. The person, you keep talking to the person, the person is just maintaining a particular posture, very, I mean very different grimace or a very different gesture which is very unusual, very bizarre. So uh, this is stupor, it's like a stone like posture, a motionless posture a person maintains. Then we have catatonic rigidity. Now rigidity refers to a very stiff posture, the person is very rigid in a very uh, upright posture. The next category that we have is catatonic posturing. Posturing again they uh, you know produce a very very bizarre, a very unusual posture again for a number of hours. Then we have this is about the symptoms, catatonic stupor, rigidity and posturing under the psychomotor category. Next we have is a subtypes of schizophrenia. Now we have five subtypes here, first is undifferentiated. Now undifferentiated you know starts, uh, this is the earlier uh, phase of schizophrenia where schizophrenia is developing. It is in fact a very acute form of schizophrenia where suddenly the symptoms are produced and this is known as a waste basket or a mixed category symptoms where all the symptoms suddenly happen to show themselves. Next we have is catatonia, again catatonia refers to the motor uh, posturing basically the motor abnormalities along with which uh, there is not much of a speech related aspect but more in terms of the motor symptoms and also can be uh, speech as well as the expression or in terms of the emotions. Next we have a category of subtypes is uh, called as paranoia. Now paranoia or paranoid schizophrenia as such deals with a very suspicious tendency of a person where a person feels, uh, doubts everybody, doubts everything. You know, let's say a person is, a man is talking to somebody and the wife feels that he's having an extramarital affair. That's the extent to which the suspicion is, which is not actually happening. So she, uh, suppose a person is talking to anybody randomly and the wife feels there's a problem. So that is the extent to which the suspicion or the doubt is. That is paranoid schizophrenia. Here there can be major hallucinations and delusions as well. Not much of a speech abnormality but majorly there is a problem with organization of hallucination and delusion. The last two categories that we have here is residual and it also covers the aspect of uh, disorganized schizophrenia.
Residual refers to the leftover symptoms. So once the person has had an episode of schizophrenia, the symptoms which are left out, particularly the negative symptoms, is known as residual schizophrenia. And the last category is disorganized. Now this normally develops again at a very early stage and it has a wide variety of symptoms, particularly very peculiar personality changes, very, very bizarre personality changes, changes in the speech. It is not really organized again and it starts off very, very early and results in a major deterioration in personality. That is about the schizophrenia topic for today. That's about it for now. Thank you.